When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they were very sad and began to say to him, one after the other, Surely you don't mean me, Lord. Jesus replied, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely you don't mean me, Rabbi. You have said it so, Jesus answered. And while they were eating, Jesus took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung a hymn, they went to the Mount of Olives. What was it like to be there that night? What was it like to watch the Messiah, the one you had trusted, the one you had followed for three years, lift simple bread and break it and say that it represented his body that would be broken for you? How do you feel when he raised the cup? and used the wine to symbolise his blood that would be poured out. Remember, this story was confusing for the disciples. They had planned and prepared for many years for the Messiah's coming. They were always watchful of it, hoping that he would come and set them free from the Roman oppression. And yet, Jesus was saying, I'm not coming to set you free with a sword, well not yet, but I'm coming in sacrifice and obedience. I'm coming to give my body and I'm coming to shed my blood so that you're free. Now, confusing as it may have been, and it still is. The mystery around this table goes on. But the great advantage we have as God's people today is that we have the power of hindsight to look back and to see how this story came to a conclusion on Good Friday and to a wonderful, rapturous end on Easter Sunday when Jesus rose again. As his disciples saw him on that day, this all made sense. The story made sense. The metaphor of bread and wine as blood and body made sense and confusion evaporated. Now as Christians, we are not to be confused. We are people who have the certainty of the Lord with us. And so I pray over this Easter week as you fall into the story from wherever you are, that you will have a deep sense of wisdom and knowledge given to you by our Lord, the same Lord that on the night he was betrayed took bread and wine and told his disciples how he would love them into eternity.